Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending January 24th. First up, this is Navy's... Let me get the link up here. Well, I'll give you... There's two articles on this one. Uh, the first one is Ghost Swimmer, Navy's, stealth, Navy's new stealth robot. Both of these are from Fox News. And then if you uh, switch over to the second link, which is entitled Navy's new stealth robot looks like a shark, that gives you a little bit more of the video. But while I'm talking about this, I'll just put a small excerpt up of some of the swimming of the video, but this is really interesting. The U.S. Navy's new state-of-the-art stealth swimming robot looks like a shark, if you can spot it. They say it's designed after a tuna, actually, more than a shark, and to me, it looks almost like a, a combination of a, a shark and a dolphin, not that I'm any expert on marine biology, but the cool thing about it is by looking at these videos, it seems to me that if you were to see this in real life from like maybe 10, 20 yards away, you would absolutely think it was just a natural swimming fish. I mean, it's just, it's it's that realistic now. Now, of course, because it needs some devices on it to uh, do its job, if you're 10 foot away from it, you're probably going to realize that it's not a natural marine creature. But the cool thing about this is, since it uses no propeller, uh, it's kind of a drone that uses the swimming motion of sharks, and uh, tuna and stuff like that, it leaves no acoustic signature to be able to be identified. It basically just, I guess if you could detect it in any way with any kind of sonar or anything like that, it would be much the same as trying to detect a dolphin or a shark or a, a tuna. So it can get into uh, harbors, it can swim in uh, water as shallow as 10 inches. It's got like, uh, it weighs about 100 pounds and it's got a huge range. Let me see if I can find out what, it was like 66 um, hours it can operate for and uh, so um, it's got really good endurance time it can go uh, travel about 300 miles so a submarine doesn't have to get into a port if you want to do some kind of stealthy monitoring of a, an enemy port or something like that you can stay like maybe uh, 50 100 miles offshore and uh, still have this thing swim in and be able to uh, do some stealthy reconnaissance and stuff like that they're talking about even having schools of them going into uh, certain ports and being able to check for underwater mines so uh, this this is a cool innovation. I I, I was kind of wondering if the the Navy and the uh, military has been um, working on stuff like this too. I mean, nothing like disguising a drone as a natural animal. I mean, you know, that would be almost like in in, in land if you would have something that mimicked the movements and the uh, looks of a squirrel uh, jumping up and down in the trees and stuff like that to be able to do surveillance. For most people, if they're seeing something like that far away, it doesn't even really bring any attention to them. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of thinking during the tests, there will probably be people far away from binoculars looking at these things, thinking they're actually looking at a real shark or a dolphin or something like that, and not even realizing what they're looking at as a drone. So, Kind of cool. If you get a chance, check that out. As usual, all the links to everything will be in the description below. And number two, Microsoft Windows 10, free download now available. Here's what we know so far. Right now what it is is it's just a download for those people that want to do testing and stuff like that. But when they do have a release date for it, which they haven't given yet, evidently for one full year they're going to give this free if you're already a user of Windows 7, 8, or 8.1 for the entire year after they give the official release date, you will be able to upgrade to this for free. So I think what my plans are myself is I'm going to uh, um, probably take one of my two Windows 7 computers and upgrade it to Windows 10, but I'm going to do a full imaging so that I can roll it back if I'm not satisfied. But it looks like they've really listened to people about the not having the start button. They're going to actually bring back a useful start button on Windows 10, so they've listened about that. And they're also going to, it's going to have the ability to play Xbox games. Now I don't know how without the cartridge they're going to do this they're probably going to have to just release it as regular PC software but if it if it blends together well enough to where you can pay with your Xbox friends and play games online then you don't have a need anymore to buy the Xbox console you can just play the same game and just play along with your Xbox friends on your computer so pretty good ideas I'm I'm hoping it's going to be a good system notice they skipped right by other people said this too they skipped right by Windows 9 didn't they I mean don't really see anything about Windows 9 whatsoever but very interesting. <clears throat> Next, this was sent by my buddy Bangalore Babble, my friend from India. This is a Kickstarter campaign, and it's Kraftwerk, highly innovative.
portable power plant. And this is a uh, not like a power plant like those batteries you get to recharge stuff. I have one of those too, and uh, they're useful. I mean, sometimes you can get uh, one or two charges out of them and charge your device maybe one, maybe two times, and then you're going to have to recharge the charging device itself. Well, this is a fuel cell, and it operates on fuel cell principles. It takes, you could take a, like a regular butane lighter refill, one of those cartridges you get at a regular, I mean, you can buy it at a Walgreens or a cigarette shop, something like that. Give it, a, uh, give it a shot of that, and you can charge an iPhone, they claim, 11 different times, and the thing's going to last weeks and weeks. As a matter of fact, at the rate I use my battery one, if I was to use something like this, it would probably last months for me. Because once you fill it up, it's not like a battery. Once you fill it up with fuel, the fuel stays in the device until you actually need to use it. So um, something like this I could carry around for three months, and then when I want to use it, it's got full power. And you're talking about, it, by the way they describe this, and it's, it's actually, even though it's a Kickstarter project, it's going to be it's going to be happening because they've got 39 days to go. Their budget plan was 500000 They're already up almost to 800000 So this is going to happen. Manufacturer suggested retail price on this is 150 bucks, but if you jump in on the Kickstarter project and pledge $99, you'll get your choice of three different models. It's just they're basically just different exteriors, but three different uh, versions of this. And uh, yeah, you'll have to wait. The only caveat about this is you're going to have to wait till about December of this year. So I guess they're cranking up right now to uh, get the design and the production underway and stuff. But uh, yeah, if you're willing to wait. Um, about another 11 months, you can have one of these for as low as $99 as a pledge. So I think that's kind of cool. I, I would think, too, that with some kind of adapter or something like that, you could use this to charge up a laptop, even if it can charge an iPhone 11 times on one uh, one fill of fuel. You should be able to charge a, a laptop with it or even run a laptop off of it. I can think of a lot of hacking to do with this thing to use it for other uses because it's, a, you know, like anything else, fuel cells, I mean, it might not be practical to make huge fuel cells, but making small pocket size. This one, uh, by the way, too, is about the size of a pack of cigarettes, so it's not big at all. I mean, it won't fit in your jeans pocket, but it'll probably fit in a coat pocket easily. So I think it's a cool idea, portable fuel cells you can carry around with you. And this next one is from Navy Thomas 8. Fox News, two planets may lurk in solar system beyond Pluto study says. I've heard that a lot, too, that they're still thinking that there may be planets, even maybe planets larger than Earth, or at the very least Mars-sized planets and stuff like that. Um, I'll just read the very first part of the article here. There's evidence of at least two planets larger than Earth lurking in our solar system beyond Pluto. A new analysis of extreme trans-Neptunian objects reveals after studying 13 of these extreme trans-Neptunian objects, or EATNOs, the odds of these are uh, the orbits. They actually wrote down in Fox, they wrote obits, the obits of these. It's the orbits of these objects are different from a theory that predicts the orbits. The exact number is uncertain given that the data that we have is limited, but our calculations suggest that there are at least two planets and probably more within the confines of our solar system. Carlos de la Fuente Marcos, scientist at the UCM and co-author of the study, said in a statement Friday, could have an average distance to the sun of 150 astronomical units. One astronomical unit, by the way, is the distance from the sun to the earth. That was interesting, too. I caught that. Uh, I didn't catch that the last time, but, yeah, the obits of the objects instead of orbits. So uh, uh, more and more, I think, on journalism and articles and stuff like that, I'm catching a, a lot of uh, mistakes and uh, not good proofreading. But still kind of cool. I mean, especially if we would find something the size of Mars that exists beyond the orbit of Pluto, that would be kind of cool. Uh, also the possibility, too, since we have that uh, one craft on the way to uh, explore Pluto very soon, maybe if we uh, would just be in luck that the other orbits of the other trans-Neptunian objects would be in the right way to where we could uh, intersect with one of those, get some pictures. That would be kind of cool. And let's see, this last one is from my friend Bob, 1954 Shadow, the first demonstration of self-propelled nanobots in a living animal. I'll put up a picture of these things. They uh, are just kind of like, uh, I don't know, look like little what, little Tic Tacs or something like that. But they're the size of, uh, the width of them is the size of a human hair. And uh, they, they'd be able to deliver chemicals and stuff like that through your body. And somebody um, in the comments was mentioning the thing, too, that we're getting closer and closer to the day to where you'll go into the doctor's office. And one of the first things you get, along with your vaccines and stuff like that, especially when you're young, is you get an injection of these nanobots that just go around and have uh, medicine inside or 
different things inside them and they'll just basically take care of you and destroy any uh, bacteria that doesn't belong in your body, destroy viruses, stuff like that. So we're getting closer and closer to where that'll be part of regular medical treatment is getting your injection of nanobots. I'll read the first part of the article. Researchers from the University of California have developed acid-fueled micro-machines capable of traveling and delivering cargo directly inside a living creature. It's a breakthrough that's expected to significantly advance the field of medical nanorobotics. Scientists have, delivered, have developed a drug-delivering micro-machines before, but these systems were only tested under in vitro conditions, cell cultures outside the body, but in the latest breakthrough, Wei, Gao, and colleagues have shown that the artificial micromotors can travel inside a live mouse, deliver its cargo, and produce no toxic effects. This is definitely an important proof of concept. Nanotechnology has the potential to reshape the way medicine is done. In the future, scaled-up versions of this rudimentary micromachine could deliver important medicines to previously inaccessible parts of the body to treat peptic ulcers and other illnesses, fight infectious diseases, or even perform complex tasks like direct cellular manipulation and repair. Um, I would like to see them be little cancer destroyers, too. How about go to the site of a cancer cell and just start gobbling it up or uh, delivering the chemotherapy medicine right to the cancer cell itself and not the rest of your body or even whatever way they possibly could, uh, maybe little micro lasers to actually zap it and burn it up. Uh, the University of California researchers say the breakthrough is an important step forward in the field of synthetic nanomicromotors. Micro motors. So that is kind of cool. Propel themselves uh, just by using uh, regular chemicals within your body and stuff like that. To make it happen, the researchers constructed polymer tubes coated with zinc. The minuscule machines were a mere 20 micrometers long, which is about the width of the strand of human hair. Once implanted in the gut of a living mouse, the zinc reacted to the acid in the stomach by producing bubbles of hydrogen, which propelled the nanobots into the stomach lining. Once attached, they began to dissolve, thereby delivering the nanoparticle content within the stomach tissue. So I'm guessing these are also made, and some of these probably will be when they do perfect them enough to use them. I'm guessing some of them are made to just uh, have your body dispose of them, really. they just Once they're done, your body basically eventually just eats them up and flushes them out with uh, the rest of the waste materials. But I'm sure there'll be different types, too. There'll probably be other types that live within your body, you know, especially if you have some kind of chronic condition that takes a long time to treat. They'll probably have others that just basically live in your body all the time, and your body just accepts them as part of what uh, is supposed to be there or whatever without rejecting them. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you again for everybody that sent in all the content and everything. It makes the show very enjoyable to do when people keep sending in good content. So take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.